friends. Glad you're joining us today. Teacher Michelle with you. We have a lot of fun planned for today. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you already know what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about flowers to wear ish. Ish. One of my favorite addendums to things is ish. Like, oh, it's straight ish or circular ish or square ish. So flowers to wear ish. Glad you're with us. Let's get housekeeping out of the way. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways, makes the picture bigger. If you're Mar and you're watching on your ginormous screen, hello. I know a giant head, just what you all need to see. Um, so today we've got a full studio. I've got Marisa with you on Facebook and out in uh, Cyberland is Caledonia also. Parker's here making sure all the technology works. Knock on wood. Yes, thank you, Parker. Uh, Leanne is all over the place. She's on YouTube. She's on Facebook. She is just checking everything off today. Hi, everybody. Carolyn is on YouTube with you as well as Susie. So hello to our YouTubers. Hello to our Facebookers. Let's get started. So today, like I said, it's flowers to wear-ish. And that's kind of the theme for the week, actually. If you saw the video on Monday, uh, Leanne demonstrated how to make an orchid lay. Super fun, super awesome, a whole lot easier than you think. So if you haven't watched that video yet, go take a peek at it. It's going to make you want to buy every orchid you ever see from now going forward. Then our Tuesday tip, the timely tip, was it, how do you say that, Leanne? Timely, timely tips, tips for the, the tulip, tulip tribe. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's a tongue twister. Uh, <clears throat> dealt with an alligator clip. So an old school beauty product, back in the salon, trying to hold hair in place or curls in place. Check that out. It's a great mechanic, not just for your hair, because you could also use it as a clip on a lapel. It could clip onto a hat, whether it's a hat for a woman or a man. It could also clip into a flower girl if she had, not to the flower girl, into the flower girl's hair. Let me clarify that. Uh, if she's wearing a ponytail, you could just slip that uh, lower portion under the rubber band, or you could clip it through her bun if she's wearing a ballerina bun or anything like that. So lots of good techniques there. And if you haven't already, you should also check out our Flowers to Wear course because I'm going to show some different mechanics today than we show in that course. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do uh, a hair clip or a comb. Haven't really decided yet. We're going to talk about both of those. I'm going to do something with a hat. And then I'm not going to tell you what the last one is because it's the fun one. So saving the best for last. So in the, in the Tulip Tuesday tip yesterday, Leanne used that alligator clip, which is very versatile. Um, two other very common ones are the comb and just a, a naked barrette. These come in different sizes, small and large. Actually, I think it's small and medium. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a larger one than this. I've got a tickle today. I've got to get my water. Because it's orange, right? Okay, there we go. They're tearing the building down across the street and they're watering the dirt pile as they move it, but it pretty much looks like a scene from Peanuts with Pig Pan across the street and there's just dust everywhere. So I apologize for the <coughs> clearing my throat constantly. But if you're working with these wire clips, there's not a lot of surface area here. So what I like to do when I'm working with those is to cut that's a little large, but cut an additional mechanic, another piece of something. This happens to be just a chunk of that clear cutting board. Um, I grabbed one out of the classroom. We use them for cutting and gluing. Um, this one's yellow, but it's just a section of those plastic cutting mats. And it's very flexible. It's very easy to work with. And when you adhere it to the barrette or to the comb, either one. It just gives you a much larger surface to work with. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I think I'm gonna work with the, I don't know. What do you think, Marisa, comb or barrette? Hmm. Well, you have oh. a correct oh. little, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, a really? request on YouTube for the comb. Okay, oh, comb it is. 
Thank you, YouTube. All right, comb works what we're gonna do. So I had cut an oval before I grabbed my comb and it's obviously way too large. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it in half. I think that's gonna be more than adequate. <clears throat> yep. And then that will allow me to have a much more spacious surface and a more solid surface to um, adhere my flowers. I could use a piece of cardboard. I could use just a couple leaves. The thing I like about this, especially with a comb, sometimes it gets shoved in and out a lot or they change position, especially if it's for the bride. She may have it in one place, like if she's wearing a veil, uh, a trailing veil, like a cathedral or something, she may have it tucked in above the veil, but the reception, if she takes the veil off, she may need to reposition this and take it out and maybe tuck it into her bun or her French roll or something like that. So um, anything that gives me a, a sturdy, sturdier, more sturdy, it's sturdier, sturdier mechanic is a bonus. So I'm going to use glue dashes to put this on here and I am going to split them in half because I don't want it wider than the top portion of this comb. If my glue is too wide and it gets in, her, in the hair, I hear it got hurt a lot when she takes it out. So I will affix my plastic disc. While I do that, do we have any, any any tulips out there saying hi? Do we have any questions? No questions yet here on YouTube. We've got uh, quite a few people still signing in, but right now we have Anne, Heidi, Vicki, Rachel, Rachel, Anne, Roxanne, and Rose joining us. Awesome, awesome. Is that Anne S. in Australia that joined us today? Uh, yes. Very good. We have several Australia peeps in the house. Oh, well, nice. Very, well, hey, thanks for joining us from Down Under. Happy to have you with us. Do we have any first timers that have checked in yet? Well, not necessarily a first timer, but mm -hmm. over here on Facebook, Ashley's back um, for the first time from being back from her honeymoon. Oh, well, welcome back. Mrs. <laughs> Good for you. Well, hope you had a fabulous trip and we're super glad to have you with us today. Back doing that flower thing on Wednesday with your tulip tribe. All right, so now I have that attached on there, if you can see that. Just gives me a little more surface. I'm gonna trim it just a smidgy. The nice thing about those um, cutting mats is they are very, very malleable and you can cut them into different shapes and forms and sizes. If you didn't want it rounded, you could make it square. There is a shiny side to it and a, a more matte textured side. I tend to like to glue my flowers to the textured side because it feels like it's got just a little more tooth that the glue grabs a little bit better on that. And I'm going to use two kinds of adhesive again, well, probably three, truth be told. Um, I always like to use a base of the glue strip. It's just, I don't know, just feels like a little extra security to me. So I'll put a glue strip on there and then <clears throat> I'll also be using the Oasis Floral Adhesive to adhere flowers. Marisa, what's happening? So Clea over here on Facebook has a very great question. Uh -huh. um, would you charge wedding labor pricing for this type of work you're doing here? Would I charge wedding labor pricing for this? Absolutely. This is um, handwork. It's a little more laborious than just your everyday design. Plus you have to know the mechanics. You have to know what you're doing. Now I'm looking for a vessel I can stick my scissors in. These aren't titanium and I need to cut that um, glue strip. So to keep it from sticking to my scissors, I will dip it in some water. And while you're dipping, I'd like to give a shout out to two new people joining us for the first time today, Brian and Debbie. Awesome. Well, Brian and Debbie, welcome. So if they're, they're on YouTube then, right? Yes, ma'am. Well, YouTubers, please make them feel welcome. We want them to come back every Wednesday and join us for flower fun. All right. So now I have my strip attached to my little plastic <clears throat> and now I can have the fun start gluing some stuff on there. So I'm working with these raspberry ranunculus and some raspberry um, spray roses. 
which are just super, they're just super happy. They just make me happy when I look at them. There's something about that color. That and I love raspberries in general. Strawberries are good, but raspberries are like, yeah, they're awesome. Do a little grooming on the back of these. Michelle, I'd like to give a shout out to the tulips over here on Facebook. Yeah, please do. Okay, so I see so far uh, we have Casey, David, John, Joanne, Carl, Robin, Marjorie, Andrea, Kathleen, Jim, who also wanted to see the um, comb. The comb. There. Okay, cool. <laughs> and Lynn, Kim, Jessica, Gayla, Scott, Janet, Drake, two Cindy's, and a Debbie and a Deborah. And then also shout out to Adrian from Ohio who's uh, joining us for the first time. Well, awesome. Well, hello to all of the tulips. I heard some names there that have been in class with us. Hi, Drake. Uh, <clears throat> And who just, who is the first time, Brian? Uh, Adrian. Adrian. From Ohio. Adrian from Ohio. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're with us today. Hope you learned something new. Make them feel welcome, tulips. Okay. So I'm letting my glue set up just a little bit. And I like to work with um, some of the preserved reindeer moss as uh an option for hiding some of my mechanics as I go through. It's very soft and pliable. It's like a wet sponge, if you will. And this is a bleached reindeer moss. And then this is just a, a tinted green. So it'll hold these colors really, really nicely. I'm not 100% sure what they've treated it with. I'm sure it's a glycerin type product, but it works really well. Oops, I'm sticking to myself. Works really, really well to just tuck in between things. It doesn't shed or dry out as much as, say, um, sphagnum moss would. So just kind of looking at this, getting my two ranunculus on there. Whoopsie, got a little extra glue there. Well, we'll be putting some moss on that. Um, and we'll do that right now before I permanently adhere myself to my arrangement. There we go. That'll help bring the eye around the corner a little bit as well. All right, so I'm gonna let those sit up for just a minute. And then we'll add in a few of these little spray roses. I have a couple buds in here, which is nice. I want to try and vary the sizes a little bit. It just makes it a little more interesting than if everything is just a big round blob. Um, that gradation in size, uh, that transition or that sequencing always just makes it much, much more interesting. Get a few little guys. I'm doing what I hate, which is just going through and cherry picking all the best blossoms off the stem. Oopsie, sorry whoever gets to use it next. And then I also would like to use just a little bit of um, the Israeli Ruscus, just to add a little bit of foliage in there. Nice thing with those is um, if you're doing handwork like this, you can pick from the bottom of your stem. So for example, let's say I had a fuller stem of this and I took just those bottom three leaves, still leaves me with a full stem that I could design with later, as opposed to going in and snipping the top out. That's a no-no, you don't wanna do that. Because then you can't really use that piece of Ruscus in a different design as its own piece. All right, so a little tail on that guy. We'll get just a little bit of glue on the backs of these. Do we have any questions out there or any Comments, joys, and concerns. I have a question. Sure. Uh, Marjorie wants to know um, how. Uh, excuse me. How far ahead can you make these? How far ahead could I make something like this? Let's say this was for an event and it was on Saturday. I would feel feel very comfortable making them on Wednesday somewhat depending on their flower choices, but uh, I would feel comfortable making them on Wednesday. The key there will be making sure that your flowers and your foliages are very well hydrated before you start designing and then once you've completed the design making sure that you treat it with an anti-transparent like crowning glory or finishing touch something like that and then 
placing it into a hydration chamber and keeping that in your cooler or your uh, however you refrigerate your finished pieces until it's time either for pickup or delivery. Now, some people like to do the crown and glory before. So when this is completed, they may treat it with crown and glory, let it dry, place it in a hydration chamber, and then place it in their cooler. Other people like to finish it, put it in the hydration chamber, put it in the cooler, and then before delivery, treat it with an anti-transparent. Tomato, tomato, Caribbean, Caribbean, whatever works best for you is the right way to do it. Um, I tend to treat with crown and glory and then place it into the cooler. Um, but that doesn't mean it's the be all end all way to do it. Carolyn, do you have a question? I do. Okay. Olive Branch Farm is curious uh, how you would cover this mechanic. She did a comb last week that used pipe cleaners as her base. Mm -hmm. And she's curious how you would cover that up on the back. Very good, Natalie. <laughs> oh, is that Natalie? It is Natalie. <laughs> Busted, I know who you are. Um, so yes, so for hiding that mechanic on the back when I'm done, good question, couple of options. My first choice would be a big salal leaf that would give it some structure and some support. I could use additional ruscus leaves on the back side. You could use camellia. Um, Gaelic's leaf would be another great option just as well. Anything that's kind of got a leathery texture to it, I think is gonna be your best bet. Um, you could continue to tuck moss back there, but that might be kind of funky on their hair. Um, I think I'd go with a leaf of some kind. Um, Dusty Miller would be great if you had it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a fresh product if you had a, a, um, a permanent, um, what did I just say? Dusty Miller. If you had a permanent Dusty Miller leaf, you could back it with that as well. That would give you some good support and it would also hide your mechanic. So great question, Natalie. Thanks. Okay, right. Michelle, with yes. moss, any suggestions on how to make it not smell like moss? Hold that thought. Uh, it smells like Oregon. Yeah. It does smell like Oregon. So mm, probably the same thing that I would do with um, baby's breath or caspia. I would Febreze it if it really was offensive to you. Um, this that's treated doesn't, doesn't smell good. I mean, it doesn't smell like Chanel, but it doesn't stink. It just smells herbaceous. Um, and I think that's a function of the, the glycerin, but I think probably like a Febreze or just letting it get to some air will do that too. You're right. Wet moss is a funk. That's just Oregon smell. <laughs> it smells like we're, you can bottle and, and sell Oregon. It would smell like wet moss. So. so comments and Leanne, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I first started uh, in the floral industry, um, going through like the back cabinets of the shop that I worked at, I think Design Master actually used to make like fragrant sprays. You are correct. Like cinnamon yeah. and yes. evergreen. And <laughs> roses. And they did not smell like roses. <laughs> I wonder if Febreze, Febreze would do it. Yeah, that's like we use on Caspia. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. That I think that it would probably be the safest bet. Um, sometimes just airing it out works really well too. I don't know if they still make the the spray scents or not. I think I would shy away from trying to add fragrance specifically to anything because most of the time they don't they don't smell a whole lot better than what you're trying to hide the smell on. Um, maybe the cinnamon, but that would be a little weird to have a rose that smelled like cinnamon. Maybe holiday. not. At the holiday, yeah, that's a good point, Parker. Okay, so I'm just adding a few of the hypericum berries in here to add just a little extra, a little extra something. And speaking of Salal, Michelle, did mm -hmm. you know that there was a bunch in the cooler? I, I didn't find it. Oh, I found it. Do you want, do you want some? No, that's <laughs> all right. Late. It's too late. I'll just use some gate locks. It's fine. It was tucked way back in Way the back area. in the back. Well, you mentioned it, and I started to dig, and I got something foil fell on the floor, something shiny, and I got squirreled, so I didn't get back <laughs> to it. But So I'm adding those Hypericum in there. 
because they are a little bit smaller than those roses that I worked with. Um, you'll notice that I have a very consistent use of my forms. All of my materials are round-ish, round-ish, there's my ish. Um, so that repetition of form, that adds to the rhythm in the design. I'm, I'm gonna go with monochromatic here. Yeah, the Hypericum are green, but so is my foliage. But my, the, my main focal flowers, my flowers are um, that raspberry color. So not to get yelled at later by Natalie, I'm going to put a little bit of calyx on the back to hide my mechanic. And that's just about, that's just about perfect. So I'll trim, oops, bug on my finger. Trim that stem really, really short. And of course I get one with a bent leaf. I could have looked at that a little closer. Now, if I had my Gaelic scissors in here, I would trim that. So, is it gonna show? Yes. So since this is going to show from the front side, I'm going to place it with the front facing out. Excuse me, the front facing, well, to the front. So the back of the leaf is will be touching the, the head at that point. That way when you're looking at the front of the piece, you're not looking at the back of the leaf. And just to do a down and dirty, because it works just fine, I'm gonna put a glue dash on there. And tuck that right onto the back. And what did I just do? I just stuck that on the back. There we go. So Michelle, uh, mm -hmm. Michelle is asking for a close up. Uh, just let her know that we're gonna be taking pictures. Yes, okay, so uh, I know it's hard to see some of the detail on this and what I was talking about, but we'll have, um, Parker will be taking photos for us. So we'll have some close ups that you'll see in the Tulip Tribe tomorrow and uh, various other places. So that just gives you a quick little comb when you see the back, you'll see there's just a little bit of moss that's peeking around the corners. It adds just a little bit of softness to it. And then I would treat this with Crown and Glory. Um, let it dry completely before you put it in the cooler. Otherwise, you're toast. It's going to get gross. You don't want that. You put too much effort into things to have them not do well. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I did, mm, little buds on there. I can't throw those out. I might want those later. You never know. I have a quick question. Sure, Parker, what you got? Avery wanted to know, with the Oasis floral adhesive, do you want to wait for it to get tacky before you add flowers, or can you just start designing with it? Good question. So on that Oasis floral adhesive, if you can let it wait a little bit, and, and I can't really give you a specific amount of time because humidity is going to have some play, your ambient room temperature is going to have some play, but if you can leave it for let's say 45 seconds to a minute, you're going to notice that it skins over and you'll notice that you start to see little teeny tiny bubbles start to develop in the glue. That's off gassing basically. It's uh, letting some of that solvent out and it's also becoming tackier. And if you put, just for discussion, if you are trying to glue two um, specifically smooth things together, but really anything. If you put a little glue on this Hypericum berry and a little glue on this Hypericum berry, then when they go together, after that glue has become tacky, you're going to get a faster, better seal. Um, a lot of times I'll just put glue on one item and touch it and pull it back. Then I have glue on both. And then as soon as it's ready, um, either skinned over or I see those bubbles, then I can put it together. So yes, you do want to let it cure a little bit, become tacky or, or um, film over. So great question, which means I probably didn't do that. I probably just put the glue on it and shoved it right in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marisa. I feel like uh, this is a perfect question for you. I don't know the answer to this one. Oh, okay. uh, gay look scissors, uh -huh. rig rack slash zigzag scissors, scissors the same? Funny you should ask that, because I forgot I don't have I don't have my um, Gaelic scissors, but I do have pinking shears, which is what you're talking about. So zigzag or rick rack, depending on what you call it, it puts a um, sharp tooth pattern when you cut something, and that would be a perfect way to just trim off the top of my Gaelic here. I brought these in because I'm going to cut some ribbon. And I want to, there you go, and you'll be able to see that tomorrow in the picture. Um, I brought these in because I wanted to cut some ribbon and I didn't want the end to fray. And that's a perfect segue into the next one. Leanne. 
Well, I got a comment over here wanting to know, do you see flowers to wear getting to be more popular now? Is it, or are people stepping away from it? Great question, whether I see flowers to wear becoming more popular. Honestly, I do. I feel, gosh, about, what was it, six years ago, the flower crown really came into its own for fairs and festivals. And in some form, it really hasn't gone away. Um, and I think especially as we roll into uh, the rest of this year and next year, people are just really ready for a celebration. And I think that flowers... Um, we tend to associate them with celebratory events and uh, flowers on your hair, flowers on your lapel, flowers on your wrist, on your fingers. Oh my gosh, how many times have we done flower rings? Um, I hope they never go out of style. They don't at my house, but um, I just think there's never a bad time to wear flowers. So um, with that, talking about flowers to wear, um, in the Flowers to Wear course, we have, Leanna, there are five segments or six segments in that? Do you remember? Actually, there's 10 total by the time you get it all together. Uh -huh. um, and crowns and fascinators and corsages. It's all included. It's amazing. Yeah, there are just... Uh, an amazing amount of video lessons in there. So if you haven't taken any of our online courses before, they're a little different than the lives because we really delve into a lot of the mechanics and a lot of the theory about why we're doing something. Um, and uh, you have recipes and you have step-by-step -step and you can pause it and run it back and watch it again, do it right along with Leanne, however you want to do it. So um, in that course, Leanne, uh, demonstrates her take on a fascinator and I wanted to jump in a little ahead of that and do something for a hat you know we are in the summer and if you're attending outside events if you're going to a concert or a wedding or something like that you might want to embellish your hat a little bit and we were talking about it in the office on uh, I guess that was yesterday and um Flowers are for special occasions, but they can be for every day also. They don't have to be for special occasions. So maybe you're going to a concert and you're gonna wear your hat, okay? Maybe that's a special occasion. So if you want, make it for yourself. If you're in a shop environment and you know there's a big concert coming up in your community, maybe you promote that. Maybe you promote uh, flower crowns or flower circlets or lays. Leanne showed you how to do that on Monday. So lots of different options for flowers to wear-ish. So what I did here is I have a pink grow grain ribbon. And the thing I like about that is it's not sheer, it's opaque. It's got a little more substance to it than a chiffon ribbon or a sheer wood, but it's not so bulky and heavy that you can't tie it. And I picked pink because it would contrast nicely. And I'm going to work in these coral pink uh, blushy tones and <clears throat> again this is where those those sturdy leaves come in we'll move our little, little bald head off to the side for a minute what I'm going to do is place some Galix leaves on here as a backing of sorts much like I did on the comb what that will do is not only give it some extra support but it will also keep that glue from um, bleeding through onto the person's hat and making it a permanent attachment to, to their chapeau. We don't want that. They might want to wear it for something else. That's not a very pretty leaf. Well, I'm going to hide it, so it'll be fine. Um, so again, I'm going to cut all my stems off. While you're cutting your stems, Avery has a great question. She's a florist at her local grocery store and uh -huh. wanting to bring in more products for flowers to wear. Okay. But she's afraid no one would be interested. Any advice? Well, I always say you can't sell it if you don't show it. So um, start small. Maybe start with something like um, flower rings. Those are easy. They don't take a lot of product. And that will give you an opportunity to just start introducing them. Um, what I find is great when I freelance for people, if we're trying to do something different, is if it's a wearable, wear it. Have it on so that your customer can see if it's just sitting on the counter it's like 
did somebody forget something? But if you're wearing it and showcasing how it, um, how it should be worn or how it's to be used, it starts a conversation, which is what you want. You want people to go, oh, that flower ring is amazing. Are you, you know, do you sell those here? Well, yes, we do. Um, having a display of them would be fabulous as well. You can get lots of interesting um, hands, like at jewelry stores that, to model rings and so forth. That's always a great way to do it. That can be at your checkout area by the cash register. Um, flowers in your hair, lays. I know some of the stores in our area carried a lot of lays around graduation time. Those are very popular. Um, so just start small. Don't have to do 500 of something, but just have enough that it gives people an idea of what's possible. And if it seems to go over well, then continue to add different products. So great question. Marisa, or are you stretching? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, so uh, Chastity, actually one of our classroom graduates, yeah. um, she has a question about the comb. Okay. Um, okay, so she says that she's always worried that if she goes too far down the comb, um, it won't hold in the hair as well, but sees that you didn't, um, uh, that you, I'm sorry, Michelle did go into the comb, so maybe it's not an issue. Um, I did go, where is that? I did go into the comb a little bit, but because I added that, um, because I added that plastic disc or that half a disc on the back, pretty much the only part that's over the comb are the petals on the, um, ranunculus. So, I'm gonna figure out where my hair is. Um, if I were to tuck this into my hair, it's going to, uh, slide up under those petals. It's, it's not as much into the comb as I think it looks like on camera. Yes, it overhangs it, but those, um, those tines or those teeth in the comb are still really accessible. But great question, yeah. So you could make that disc a little bit larger and have more of your material standing, extending above the comb if that's a concern for you. Play around with it, just see, see which way you like better, see how it works better. So I've adhered some of those Gaelic sleeves to the back and that will end up going against the band on my hat just to keep that glue off the hat band itself. So from there, I can just start adding in my materials. Um, oh, let's start with a little bit of hydrangea just to give it some, give it some body and some fluff. Do we have any other first timers that have popped on? Anybody that was shy to say hi at the front end? No? No, but I have a few couple more tulips that popped in. Oh, well, who we got? Give them a little shout out. Yeah. Um, well, Alana just she popped in and says, woohoo, go Michelle. <laughs> and Nikki, Lori, Harmony, Cherie, Pam, Rachel, and Arthur. And, um,. <laughs> Do you have any possible tips on taking the back of the paper off the, the U-glue dashes? Oh, isn't that fun? Especially if you cut it the wrong way and you can't get a hold of it. I wish I did. I wish I had a magic pill for that. Um, the only thing I can tell you is the part that you can grab, that little extra, because the glue dash itself is just a smidge narrower than the plastic coated paper that's on it that loose edge is to the outside. So if this was the strip running uh, out of the box, that loose edge to pick on is on that outside edge. Um, on the glue strips, it's on both sides. There's a little bit of an overlap on both sides. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like getting that bag, the produce bag at the grocery store. You know, don't lick your finger with this one because it won't help. But it is, yeah, there's really just no great way to do it. <laughs> but a great question. <laughs> so I've got my uh, hydrangea here just to give me a little, little fluffy start. And I'm going to do a little touch and go back like we talked about. Just to add a little extra glue on there. Ooh, that one's nice and, that one's nice and gooey. Nice, nice, nice. So I'm touching it down to the ribbon and pulling it back. I'm gonna let those sit a second. Oh, he needs a little bit more glue. 
let him sit up while we're set up rather while we're adding some additional flowers. So here what I'd like to work with are some of these gorgeous, gorgeous garden roses. Now, last week you saw Leanne talk about the um, photo shoot that we were doing for our new section of the wedding floral specialist, the ceremony section. And some of these are left from that. These are, they still smell like ambrosia. They smell amazing. And they just continue to open and open and open. So um, I figured, what the heck, I'm gonna take advantage of that and uh, put these big open blousy roses into this hat band and really make it over the top. Carolyn, what's happening? Well, Natalie. Yes. <laughs> That's a great question. How yeah. are those hydrangea going to hold up since they're an extremely thirsty flower? Great question. How will the hydrangea hold up since they're so thirsty? They have been extremely well hydrated. And before I started to design with them, and I probably should have mentioned that, so thank you for asking this. Before I designed with them, knowing that I couldn't really spray this down very well with Crowning Glory afterwards without staining my ribbon, I pre-treated all of these flowers with Crowning Glory. So they've already had their little dip in the anti-transparent. Then once it had dried, then I can assemble it like I'm doing now. Granted, if it's 110, they're gonna get probably a little wilty by the end of the day. But keep in mind, these are event flowers, so they may not, um, you know, they don't need to last for a week. They just need to look good for um, the duration of the event. But that's, you know, honestly, that's a great tip. Anytime you're doing um, handwork or corsage work or body flower work, where once the piece is finished, you have something that's delicate or can't get wet is pre-treat your flowers, then design. So they'll already have been um, super hydrated and then you'll add your anti-transparent before you do your design. That way you don't have to saturate um, maybe a, a fancy fabric on a hat or a, a nice ribbon. Say if this was a, a silk or something like that, you definitely would not want to be getting that wet. <clears throat> Excuse me, the color might run, which would be no bueno. Marisa, what's yes. happening? So Amelia, uh -huh. who, let's see, just finished the advanced course, uh -huh. um, wants to thank you, Teacher Michelle, for all the advice you gave her during the course. Oh, well, good. I am so glad. You know, I, I love it that you took the class, but I love it that you're tuning in to watch and get some more inspiration and education and fun little tips and tricks. Um, it's... It's so interesting in the course because the when you take any of our online courses, um, whether it's basic or advanced or flowers to wear or anything like that, there's definitely a give and take between um, us as teachers and you as students because you can still call in and talk to us, you can email us, um, you can message us. We're still available for you, which I think is really cool. And, um, you know, you get that instant, not instant, excuse me, you get that um, personal feedback on your submissions. And um, in that Flowers to Work course, it's the same thing. You still have um, submissions that you need to, to do for different designs, and we give you personalized feedback on that. We tell you what you did well, what you need to work on, how, how to fix something if it didn't quite turn out the way you thought it should or we or we thought it should so yeah well hopefully i'll continue to see you in some other class see you in some other classes all right so now that those are starting to set up you can't really see this but i've got lots of little bubbles in there so i'm going to tuck these onto the ribbon oh, this baby's so pretty And then I'll start to add in a little bit of the Eurygium here for texture. Just changes it up a little bit. A little contrast. Definitely well, a lot of contrast. The Eurygium are like little weapons. If you've, have you noticed that when they start to dry out, how they get so painful to work with? Literally painful to work with. All right, get a little of those tucked in there. Let's see, how about, how about some of these pretty little coral roses? Aren't those gorgeous? Couldn't resist those that market. 
Sherry is wondering if that's the technique that is taught in the Flowers to Wear course. Uh, no. It is not. There are different techniques in the Flowers to Wear course. So uh, what you'll want to do to find out those, of course, is take the class. But I didn't want to be redundant. If we have students that are in the class, uh, I wanted to make sure that um, they get the full lesson, not just a quickie, do this, do that, glue it in place. Um, this is just an option for a mechanic. Uh, I think on the circlet in there and the flower crown, Leanne does two different mechanics for two different uh, types of circular-ish, there you go, my ish, round-ish uh, head adornments. All right, we'll get those nice and gooey and gluey. And I think I'll put a little bit of Hypericum, woo, hello glue, a little bit of Hypericum in here. I think the, did the green, I've got some pink ones back here that are kind of pretty. Whoa, maybe not those. Um, we'll tuck a few of those in just for a little extra, a little extra something. So uh, Caledonia and um, Susie, if you haven't already, and I'm sure you have because you guys are awesome, could you throw a link up there for the Flowers to Wear course? <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, also for the uh, alligator clip that Leanne did, the Tulip Tuesday one, I think that might be helpful for people. Anybody that's watching today, did you see the Tulip Tuesday yesterday? Did you see the, uh, the alligator clip? If so, have you tried it yet? Did you like it? All right, so I'll get a little bit of glue on my Hypericum stems to work them in. And I got a little bit of glue on Michelle as well because the Hypericum stems are sticking to me. Everybody's talking about that little glue stand you're working with there. This little <laughs> fella here? Yeah. Yeah, so. That is a very fancy, fancy piece of equipment. It's for toothpaste. Go figure. Um, you can find it at probably at a local drugstore or Amazon, but it's for getting the most toothpaste out of your tube. And the bonus for us is glue works in the same manner and it lets us stand it upright, which is awesome. Then the only thing you have to worry about is where did you put your cap, which can be a challenge in and of itself. All right, so now I have a few more of these little spray roses. I'll tuck him in and bring him back out. Total side thought, does the cap flip over and fit in the holes? <laughs> you know, I <laughs> squirrel, I don't know, but I'm let's sorry. try it. Good, good girl. All right, Marisa gets a gold star today. That's, that's perfect. That's fantastic. I was like, do you glue a string to the lid and then- I know, <laughs> right. How do I do that? Do How can we figure this out? Yeah. I have a little, um, I'm not as cool as Leanne. I don't have one of these little stands at home. I have just a votive cup. And as soon as I take the lid off my glue, I throw the, the cap in that votive cup. I have like six caps in there. That way, um, if I've lost one along the way, oops, hello, um, I can use an extra one. All right. Yes, Marisa? So it looks like, oh, Linda uh, watched the alligator clip video. All right. And has made two already. Hey! And gave one to a friend who broke their shoulder and is now wearing the clip on their sling. And then the, nice. other, one, the other one went to a friend with um, really, really curly hair. With really, really cur oh, curly Oh, okay, hair. yeah. All right, very cool. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that you've tried it already. I thought it was a really... Um, Clever, clever technique. Those alligator clips have been around forever. Uh, I know they were rolling around in my mom's, you know, medicine cabinet, and they're not expensive, and they're just so dang versatile. Um, how cool would a boutonniere be with that? Forget pinning something. I'm just clip it on, and away you go. All right, I'm gonna add another eurygium in there. I was going to add some greenery, but I think I'm just going to keep it with the, keep it with the, hello, drop it on its head. There you go, Michelle. Woo, whoops. And that wasn't quite set. Yay me. 
See, that's when you rush it. Shouldn't rush it. What did I tell you? Wait, and I didn't wait. So that is a bad me. But it's live, you can tell, because if it weren't live, you wouldn't have seen that, right? <laughs> okay, so now I've got my hat and my head here, my glass head, and I can just place this around. And this is where it gets fun. You can decide, do you want it to be, um, do you want it to be centered? like across the front, do you want it asymmetrically placed so it's on the side? Totally up to you. I could go all the way around and flower the whole circumference of the hat. That would be gorgeous. Depending on the product you use, it might be a little heavy. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to go halfway. Make sure I get my ribbon all going the same way. And you could tie a bow. You could tie um, a square knot, which is hopefully what I'm doing when I'm done. I'm used to doing it on myself, not looking at it. It's really pretty on camera, Michelle. Oh, good. It actually looks really good on that. On the little glass head? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I figured that was easier than me trying to put it on my head. It's going to be a good photo. Glue like stuff. That. Yes, Leanne. A couple of things. Janet wanted to make sure that people knew when they you sprayed the crown and glory and had your engine to do front, back, bottom, top, you know, satch. Yes, face. yes. Thank you, Janet. That's wonderful. Um, my square knot is more of a, an oval-ish. And -ish then knot. Mary Jo came in late and just wanted to know what type of glue are you using? Okay, perfect. So let me reiterate Janet's point, which is excellent. When I talked about um, pre-treating my flowers, specifically the hydrangea with Crown and Glory, I literally don't have a jug of it, but I literally covered the front, the back, shook it a little bit, squirted some more, shook it so it just really saturated the flowers and coated it. Same with the roses. Um, made sure it got down inside. The beauty of Crown and Glory is it stops the flowers growth or opening, not really growth, but it stops the flowers opening at that point. So if the flower is like this and I spray it with Crown and Glory, it's going to stay like this. It's not going to continue to bloom open. And when you're doing something like this or any kind of wearable, any body flowers, that's normally what you want. You've pushed them to their biggest opening possible and you just want to hold them there but yes it's just fully saturating it um, and then the type of glue I used on this was the Oasis floral adhesive please please do not use hot glue <clears throat> if you're using silk flowers you have permission to use hot glue but if you're using fresh please stick with um, Oasis floral adhesive, that's what we feel is the best. It keeps it from popping off when you put it in the cooler because it's very elastic. It, it will expand and contract with the temperature changes. It would be a shame to get this all done and beautiful and boop, it pops off when you're ready to deliver. So I did just a little, just a little square knot there and <clears throat> trimmed my ribbon with those pinking shears. So you'll be able to see better in Parker's photos, but it just puts a little, um, zigzag edge on the ribbon and it keeps it from fraying which is the critical point all right so we're going to move this big head out of the way while you're doing that can i ask you a couple questions sure okay uh john actually asked this earlier about uh -huh. the crown and glory uh how do you feel or would this work if you actually like um poured crown and glory like into a bowl or something and just dumped the hydrangea in there Yes, so excellent question. You could do that. Um, let me grab. So if I'm doing a, um, a wired and tape corsage, and you know I mentioned if you were using an expensive ribbon, if I was using a silk or a silk chiffon, or something that wasn't a wired edge ribbon, something without a lot of body, I don't wanna saturate that with Crown and Glory after the piece is finished. So if I'm doing an assembly on that, I'll take, pretend that's a full size flower, right? I'll take that flower, dip it into the crown and glory, and then shake a little bit of the excess off and then let it sit upright. I typically do that after I have wired and taped it because if you do it beforehand, you've got a very slick, slimy flower um, and the stem and it's drippy. So I'll have wired and taped this, dipped it into my crown and glory, 
shake off some excess and then set this into a votive cup or a little jar to kind of dry off while I prep any additional materials, i.e. the bows, or am I adding some rhinestones or something, feathers, because you know me, feathers and rhinestones, um, if I'm adding something else into it. So yeah, immersion would be great. Make sure that when you're done, you do not pour that crown and glory back into the bottle to reuse. It's like quick dip. You don't want to keep reusing it, use it and then discard it. So try and use the smallest container that you can so you're not wasting that product. But yeah, great, great question. Can I ask you another one? You can. <laughs> um, so you like Crown and Glory for this situation as well, better than Petal Proofer? Petal Proofer is a completely different product than Crown and Glory. Crown and Glory is a topical anti-transpirant. So think like antiperspirant for us it keeps the moisture in. So it's keeping that flower from losing its moisture. Petal proofer is tacky, it's sticky, but it's something you're going to spray on the back of a flower to hold the petals together. Uh, most commonly we use it on chrysanthemums, spider mums, and football mums especially. But what it does is it seals the back of the petals together and keeps them from falling off because once those outer petals, like on a rose, once those guard petals start to come off, that's when the rest of the rose just falls apart. Peonies are another excellent time to use petal proofer. Do not spray that on the face of your flower. That's only for the back to keep your petals. So good, good question. So the last one, I'm gonna go quickly because I wanna get this one finished. Uh, but you guys have had great questions today. So in the Flowers to Wear course, Leanne demonstrates an amazing flower heavy fascinator. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's so big and luscious and full of floral and a specific mechanic for it. I'm not gonna show that mechanic and I'm not gonna show it quite that full of flowers, but it's still something that would be appropriate for a party or a wedding. Um, if you're familiar with fascinators, they are very popular in the UK. And I say the UK, not just England, because uh, New Zealand, correct me if I'm wrong, and Australia, if y'all are going to a wedding, you're going with something in your hair or a beautiful hat. You know, those of us in the colonies, we're not as civilized yet, and we don't do that quite as often. But I think we should, because I think it's just, a, it just takes your, attire up a notch, it just elevates everything. The addition of any flowers, I think, elevates whatever you're wearing, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, I think the fascinator is super fun. It, Carolyn? Yep. Yeah, Amy's got a great, great question. She's wondering what exactly is Quick Dip? She hears us talking about it a lot, and is it like Crowning Glory? No, Quick Dip is completely different than Crowning Glory. Quick Dip is a rapid hydration product, and that is to help bring limp flowers back to life or things that look just a little bit dehydrated if you're trying to give them um, an extra drink. And it's called Quick Dip because you quickly dip the cut flower stem for about three to four seconds into the solution and then place that into your um, holding bucket with flower food. So it's a pre-design process. So you receive your flowers, you're processing them. They look a little wilty. You're gonna give them a little extra drink. That's when you'd use the quick dip. Crown and Glory is going to be at point of design and delivery. So it's after you've made something, you're going to spray that onto the flower arrangement or the corsage or whatever it is to help hold that moisture in. So great question. And all these little things, they all have their, their their place in the chain of life. And sometimes you need all of them and sometimes you don't need any of them. So what I have here is called Cinema Ribbon. Some of you may be familiar with this. Um, probably used most often if you're doing like a beachy wedding or a rustic-y wedding. It's made from abaca, so kind of like, I don't know how I would describe it. Kind of linen-y, burlap -y, but not as, soft as linen and then not as rough as burlap. It's like the two got together and had a baby and this is what they made. So it's like ish? It's ish, thank you. It's, 
it's burlap-ish. But the cool thing about it, it is used in millinery. So <clears throat> what I want to show you today, bring my little, my little bald head back up here, is a fascinator. So this material is used by folks who make hats, uh, milliners, and or fascinators, and you'll notice I've been able to crease it and it's holding the crease. Now I've got this one done already because I used um, Design Master color tool in prairie grass to color shift a little bit. This felt a little too aqua to me when it was on there. And the base that I used, my, um, my headband is kind of an ugly plastic ivory. So what I did was I created the base for my fascinator. I adhered it to the headband with a U-glue dash. I don't want to use cold or um, hot glue because if this goes into my cooler, it will pop off and you will cry. Trust me, just don't go there. Um, so you could use Oasis Floral Adhesive or you could use a U-glue dash or U-glue strip. And then once I had it attached, then I sprayed the whole thing with um, prairie grass. That way I got the same color on everything and it just upped the game of the color on this. I just enhanced it a little bit, made it look a little um, fresher, a little more prairie-y. So what I did to create this is just took the Sinmay ribbon and you can find this at your wholesaler, you can find it at craft stores, you can find it online. And I just basically did figure eights it's kind of like learning to make a bow, right? Those of you that have been in class, we talk about just make a big figure eight. They don't all have to go the same direction, the loops. You can flip them sideways, however you want to do it, really. Let's say I want him to curl up a little bit. Come to mama, behave yourself. All right. So going back to crowning glory, which do you prefer, crowning glory or finishing touch? And which is better for using uh, on flowers that are going to be out in the hot sun? Oh, you folks have great questions today. Okay, so crowning glory and finishing touch are both anti-transparents. They have a slightly different um, end result. Crown and Glory will lock the flowers in place wherever you spray them. It will stop them from continuing to open. The other product is going to help keep the moisture in, but it will not stop the flower from blooming more. So if I'm doing something that does not have a water source, if I'm doing a crown or a hair comb or any kind of body flowers, I'm going to use Crown and Glory because I want it to hold exactly how it is when I'm done with it, as opposed to continuing to open. If I were going to be, um, if I were going to be placing it on a centerpiece or some kind of arrangement, I might use finishing touch because then it's going to allow those flowers to continue to bloom. Especially if I'm doing party work and I'm doing 45 centerpieces on Wednesday, but I don't need them till Saturday. I may want those garden roses to keep opening and opening and opening or those peonies. So then I might use finishing touch. When I go to deliver it, I might saturate it with crown and glory because I want them to stay at that point. So good questions. All right, so what I'm doing here is taking a little bit of that metallic wire. So not the bullion, not the crinkly one, but the next one up that is um, a little thicker and sturdier. And I just made a hairpin and pinned through it. So I connected all those little pieces together. You could put a glue dash between each one, but that's a lot of expense. If you had your sewing machine set up in your shop, you could just go zip zip on the sewing machine too. But because this is very porous and you can insert things through it, um, just running a little bit of wire through it is perfect. Got some Irish pendants here, cut some of those little babies out. So that right here is what I used to create this right here. The only difference is I went into those loops and just pinched them Gave him a good sharp pinch and a little bit of a twist. And now I have my little leaves or my petals, however you want to consider those. So 
give that a couple more just to finish that one out. And if you like the loose ends, you can leave them. If you don't care for the loose ends, get rid of them. That's totally up to you, total preference. And then I'll just use a glue dash on the back. Give it a really good push. Eek. <laughs> and then grab that loose little bit of tab that we can never find. And then I would place that onto my base like so. And now I have my fascinator base. Okay, Leanne, you had a question? Well, I just had to giggle because I'm looking at YouTube and Facebook and between them, Lori and Tammy both are like, can you staple that? Oh, you absolutely, <laughs> you absolutely can staple it. Yeah, yeah, I looked back here, it's like, I don't see the stapler. So we're gonna have to go old school. So little Miss um, Glasshead here does not have ears, so it doesn't really fit like it should. <laughs> She's got little pokey outies, but they're really not ears. So um, what that does is give me the base to then glue my, uh, my flowers in. So. That's where I'm going to leave it because we'll have the rest of this uh, as a tutorial for you to show you how we put it all together. So thank you all for coming today. Thanks for spending an hour with us. Um, I hope you learned something uh, about antitranspirants <laughs> and quick dip and pre and post treatments and a little bit about flowers to wear-ish. And um, yeah, thanks for taking the time. Have a great rest of your week and go do something you love. See you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>